Hi! Several years ago I made a reed making video that has become one of the most watched reed making videos on the internet. So I've changed a number of things in the last few years since I made that first video, including going all the way back to the tube cane stage. So now you can actually see the entire process from a raw plant all the way to finished reed. And I've also sped up a bit of my process so that it doesn't take as long, so I can get a reed done from an earlier stage to completion in even less time than it took me before. So here's an updated bassoon reed making video. I start with segments of tube cane. This is Argendonax. I'm measuring the diameter with a caliper that lets me find the narrowest and widest places because every tube is slightly oblong. After I mark it, I know exactly where to split it, and I split the piece into four segments. After I've split all of the tubes that I've decided to split, I check the diameter of each individual piece to make sure that it fits within the spec of what I'm using. This also gives me a chance to weed out pieces that might have really inconsistent grain or that are really obviously not going to work because of its twist or how bendy it is or something like that. After I've selected the straightest pieces, I select the straightest segment from the piece and then use the guillotine to clip it to length. I'm using a metal mirror of some sort that I picked out of an old cosmetic bag or something here. This is the Rimpel automatic electric gouging machine. I also use it for pre-gouging, which is what you're seeing here. So the machine is connected to a power drill, which I use a Velcro strap to have it kind of go on itself. On the other side of the machine, which you can't see in this shot, is a very high RPM motor that's connected to the gouging blade, uh, which is rotating inside that, and it's kicking out a lot of sawdust, so the tube you see is connected to my Dyson vacuum cleaner. After pre-gouging, I need to take the machine kind of apart in order to change the blade out. Uh, this saves wear on the better blade that I use for the gouging stage, but I also need to change the dimensions. I pre-gouge to about two and a quarter millimeters thick, and then when I take the blade out, I reset the machine to my final dimensions. There's a micrometer on the machine that tells me exactly where I've got to go, so I don't have to do any guesswork. And here I am gouging. Since I'm removing a lot less cane, I can go a lot faster with this process, so here I've gouged half a dozen pieces of cane in just a few seconds. After I gouge, I soak the cane and dry the cane multiple times over the course of a couple of weeks to stabilize the cane. It might curl, it might not, but it probably shrinks a little bit, kind of like a cotton shirt after washing and putting it in the dryer. So anyway, uh, this is the shaping process. I have my own custom shape that is made by Fox. I just use an X-Acto knife and follow the template.
After shaping, this is the profiling portion. Put it on my MD Reads profiler and take the majority of the bark off. The only thing I don't like about this machine is that it doesn't set a particularly clear collar, so I have to manually put a real right angle collar in the profile of the blade after I've put on the wires and started doing the scraping. You'll see that process in a little bit. I don't profile with a spine. Um, I'm using just the round uh, end pins to create a very even side to center taper. There isn't much, it's not much thicker on the inside than it is on the outside of the blades. This is my new method of scoring. I just using a 1024 tap tool that I've put into an older Rieger reamer handle and I just take a couple of swipes and it scored well enough for how I need it to go. My apologies, this video is a little out of focus. This clip is a little out of focus. Um, just wrapping it in butcher's twine. No magic here, just make sure you get the thread all the way to the end of the tube. This is new compared to my old method. So I was using hot water before to soak the entire reed in, um, taking a page out of Lou Skinner's book where he actually soaks the gouged cane, or maybe even the raw tubes, in boiling water in order to soften them. Um, this allows me to really soften just the tube. You notice I only soak the tube portion of the reed in the boiling water there. Um, makes it really pliable, goes right on the forming mandrel, and I don't get any cracks. In fact, the only reason that I score at all is because I need a little bit of texture on the tube to hold the turbine on. Um, I could go get by without any scoring at all using this boiling method, but um, then the tube becomes too slippery and the wrapping that I put on eventually falls off too easily. So anyway, showing you the process twice. I hold it in the water for about 10 or 12 seconds and then fit it on the Rieger forming mandrel and then on the Rieger drying rack. Uh, let it sit on the drying rack for about a week and then I pull it off the rack and take the thread off and then this is my beveling process. I'm using an orbital sander and um, takes the end of the cane off pretty easily so that's how fast I can bevel now. Putting on the wires is pretty simple. I'm following the kind of the Hertzberg method of forming the tube this way by beveling after letting the tube dry for a while. So after the tube dries on the rack, um, bevel with sandpaper, um, and I just do it really fast with the orbital sander. And then you put the wires on. Wire number three first, about five millimeters from the end of the tube. Clip it off with my Leatherman tool. It leaves a just the perfect amount of wire off the end. My shape is designed specifically to have the second wire go 40 millimeters from the fold. So I just check the measurement with my ruler, nudge it exactly to where it needs to be, make any final adjustments if I have to, and then get the wire nice and snug. This is hopefully the last time I ever have to actually tighten the wires. I don't like tightening the wires after I've started working on the reed because I feel like it chokes the reed off too much. Since I'm putting the wires on dry, 
once you soak the reed, the reed actually expands a little bit. So the wires squeeze the reed a little bit, but once you re-soak the reed, the cane soaks up to expand to fill the wire as it was the first time you made it. So after I put the wires on, I use standard size 10 crochet thread. Um, this is Aunt Lydia's size 10 crochet thread. I use two spools of it at the same time. Cuts down how long I have to wrap the reed by well, factor of two. I start by wrapping the turban and then wrap up the rest of the tube and make a quick little knot and call it a day. If I ever bothered to, I could probably learn how to hide the knot a little better, but I don't really care that much. I like having two different colors of multicolored thread. It creates a random design that's different for every read. And I'm about to cut to a different video so that you can see how I tie, and you'll notice that the read magically changes colors <laughs> because I grabbed a clip from a different filming for that. So my pink reed magically becomes yellow and blue. Tie the knot up by the second wire and cut it off with an X-Acto knife. I have some end cutting nippers that let me get the third wire trimmed off nice and close. I'll then duco cement the turbines. It's one coat of duco cement enough for me. Yes, so I don't bother with a second coat later. I usually like to do this with a fan blowing on the reeds, uh, which keeps the fumes down and also helps the duco dry faster and not drip onto the drying rack. After the cement is dried, I'll fold the wires down with my pliers, and then I can ream the reed, and I use a Rieger reamer bit with a stop on it and my power drill again, and the reed is reamed. So it's kind of nice when I'm doing 30 or 40 of these at a time to not have to twist so much. I then take a diamond reamer and just kind of clean out the tube a little bit. My diamond reamer that I like is by Pansier. Use my, again, Rieger rotating tip cutter on a soaked reed to clip the tip to length. And then use my Rimple tip profiling machine to do the uh, this gets me about 80 percent of the way there on most reeds I have to do a little bit of hand scraping and then I know that I need to probably do some final finishing scrapes after I've done my second scrape um, but I'll do the tip clip and the Rieger tip profiler in one day or the uh, Rimple tip profiler in one day so again, you'll notice the reed changed colors magically when I flipped it over on the machine, but this gives you a different angle of how the machine works. It's very accurate, and I've had the machine for more than 10 years, and I've never had to sharpen the blade. It's fantastic. So the next day, I actually have to put in some hand work. So this is the first time I'll actually bring out my knife. I uh, use a razor blade to just trim the tiniest bit off of the corners. I don't know if that really helps the reed much at all. It's mostly a habit for me at this point, but I like how it looks and it doesn't seem to harm the reed in any way. It might keep the tip of the corner from getting caught on things. So here's how I set the collar. I use my planing knife to score where the collar should be and then kind of reverse profile blade sort of the the cane off of the back collar area and then I do the same thing to the other side it's kind of a risky process but after you've done it a few thousand times you pretty get pretty good at doing it so I use a Grobet flat warding file these days I like how sharp it is compared to the really cheap triangle files that I used to use. So I'll use this to clean up the really rough cut of the collar that that planing blade did and then also to work the rails.
at least the rails on the back two-thirds of the reed where the tip profiler needs to kind of be blended into the back portion of the reed. So I'll check the reed through the transparent plaque to my light just to make sure that there isn't any real obvious things that I need to work on with the reed. Um, and I'll take my knife and do kind of the hopefully what is the last scrape that I need on the reed. It usually isn't, but this gets me about 90 to 95 percent of the way done. Um, I just know what needs to be done based on past experience with my tip profiler. Basically I'm pulling the tip area and the heart back and maybe cleaning up the channels a little bit. Right there I'm scraping on the channel on that reed. Take 1000 grit sandpaper to the whole thing just to make it smoother. It feels nicer on the lips when you have to actually play the thing if there's not rough edges all over the place. And I try to keep all of my tools clean between every time I use them, so a toothbrush comes in really handy. The next day or so, I can finally play test the reed. This particular clip was filmed more than six months ago, so I'm kind of trying to remember exactly what I needed to do. But on this first reed, things seem to go pretty well for me. I check what the scrape looks like might change from the previous day actually. It's kind of funny how the reed changes. So I noticed some immediate places without even crowing the reed or or doing anything. I could usually tell if I need to scrape certain parts of the reed. This one looked like it had some spots in the channels towards the back that needed to be lightened up. That's pretty typical with my profiler and tip profiler setup. Always go over it with sandpaper after using a knife or a file. And then finally get to play test the reed. So this one played pretty close to how I want them to play on the first day. I just needed to do a few wire adjustments after the scrape and then do one final check. pretty much all I needed to do with this one. I consider that reed done at this point, um, ready to go to a customer. I know what the reed's going to do after it dries and I play it the next time because I've made these reeds in this style for so long and I've done it so many times I know kind of what the reed is going to turn into. So it's a little soft right now but it'll stiffen up for the, for the uh, ultimate owner of that reed later. Basically, I only need to do two tests on any given read. I want low D to be full and rich and easy responsive, and, I, and first finger E should be fairly stable. Um, again, I want the read to be a little soft right now, so I am totally okay with first finger E being easy to sag if I really want to make it sag. As long as I can stabilize it uh, by not pushing it too hard or by adding a low E key, that's usually enough for me to know that the reed isn't going to be too soft the next time this reed is played on. So this second reed, now at this point you could stop watching this video, I'm done. That, that was one reed all the way to the end. Um, this reed though gave me a little bit more trouble, so I thought I would leave this clip in so that you could see what the finishing process might entail for a reed that wasn't <laughs> quite so lucky. Um, so this one I could immediately tell by just one quick crow that it was way too resistant. 
um, and needed to have a lot of wood removed from it. So I'm just checking the shading of the cane with my lamp and the transparent plaque and removing cane where I kind of know from experience where it needs to come off, where it can come off without ruining the reed, basically. Most of the work at this point is probably going to be in the back two-thirds of the reed because the tip profiler gets the tip thin enough, but the channels, the collar area, and maybe the transition area between the tip and the back half of the reed might need to be worked on. So I'm still not satisfied with that crow, so I haven't even decided to try to play it on a bassoon yet. It would work, but it would be too stiff, and I know that right away. So that last playtest sounded pretty good, but I must have felt that that reed was still being too stiff for how it should play this day. Um, for the first 30 seconds of its life, it's still too resistant, probably too stable of a first finger E. Low D, maybe not as rich as I really wanted it to be. So I'm trying to pinpoint exactly what parts of the reed need to be removed in order to free the reed up. I'm not following any sort of specific tuning guide or anything like that. I just know from experience with my profile and shape and tip profiler that this is where a cane needs to come off when the reed isn't free-blowing enough. final adjustment to the wires, and then I was finally satisfied with this read, which gave me a fair bit of problem compared to most. Thanks for watching!